Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 255. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 252 to 260. Hey, we're going to see how to do a two variable data table, which is great for data or for what if data analysis. Hey, let's figure out what our monthly payment is, and then we'll figure out how to build a table that'll show us different payment amounts for our loan based on different rates and different years. Two variables. We just saw one variable data tables in 253 and 254, so we'll do two variables here. The loan amount will be the price minus the down payment. Oops, Excel is talking again. The annual rate will be equals the annual rate divided by 12. Hey, how come uh, I can type that 12 into a formula, but I didn't type the 10%. Because if we're really always going to do monthly rate, then that variable is not going to change. How about total months equals years times 12. And finally, the PMT would be the monthly payment. It needs the period rates for rate and number. So for rate, we have to click on monthly rate comma. For NPER, we have to click on not years, but months. And then the present value, which is positive in cash flow analysis, because when we borrow the money, it's a plus coming into our pocket. That formula will give us a minus, which says that's how much, that much money has to come out of our pocket, our wallet, or our purse each month. Now, we want to vary this. So let's say we, we uh, had a 12% here and 30 here. Notice how we vary two variables. So when you have that situation and you want to just build a table of payments based on changing two variables, then that's when you can use a two variable data table. Now I will show you, um, I basically never use two variable data tables because it's just as easy if not easier to create it with uh, formulas. But whereas when we saw earlier, the one variable data table is awesome and can save you a lot of time as compared to formulas. Now we need some variables here and here. How about we put uh, years here and rate here. So I'm going to, from my assumption table, notice I have a start number of months and month increment and a start rate and a uh, annual rate increment. And so we'll use these values, and then we can change them here, and the whole data table will change. All right, let's start right here. Equals, and we'll do our uh, start months, enter. And then we'll do equals the one above plus our increment. And we'll lock this increment going down. I'll hit my F4 key twice, so the dollar sign's in front of the row, because we're copying this formula across the rows. Then I'm going to copy it down. Now we'll do something similar for rate equals the start number tab equals one to my left plus the increment. And I'm going to lock it since I'm going to copy this formula across the columns. I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the C. Control Enter, and then I'll click and drag this over. Now we have a set of changing variables here, a set of changing variable here. Now different than the one variable, the one variable we kept this cell blank. In a two variable, you need to actually put the formula here. So equals, and now I don't want this to be negative down here, so I'm going to put a minus and then click on this. Now, just as with the one variable data tables, you got to make sure that this formula is using the original inputs for both of our variables. We have an annual rate and uh, months here. So we have to make sure, let's hit our F2 key. We can see right now that that formula is just looking there. Escape, and then I'm going to click here and hit F2. You can see that this formula is in fact using the original total months, but it's not using the original total annual rate. But we can see that that blue one, C17, if I click Escape and then click here and hit F2, it is in fact using that original uh, input variable. Now that's how it works. Even if you have to go through hundreds of formulas to indirectly get back to some original input, 
this formula here must use it. Because when we tell the data table to look here and here, this formula better be using those. All right, so we have our situation, variable, variable. And we have our one formula here. Now we can highlight the whole table. And then in 2007, you go to data, and then what if analysis in the data tools group, and then data table. In 2003, you just go to the data menu, and then table. Now here, unlike before, we have two variables. So we have to put a row and a column. The way I always remember it is row. Well, look, our variables are in a row here. Even though, to me, I think of this as a column header. In this data table, because they're in row, you have to put um, your cursor right here for row. And then go up and find that original annual rate variable, and click right there. Now for column, since these we've chosen to put those variables in a column, we have to uh, click here in the text box and find the original input for total uh, months. And that's it right there. And then click OK. What it does is it creates an array formula using the table function. And you can see here, we used both arguments, the row and the column input. And just like that, and notice if I click Escape here and just highlight this, so you can see the curly brackets, which says it, it's an array. So there you have it very quickly. Uh, now, well, let me just show you the alternative here. I would uh, choose to do this with formulas because it's so much faster. I don't have to set up the data uh, table stuff. Anyway, I'd highlight the whole cell. And in the uh, light colored cell, I'd say equals PMT. And I would select my uh, rate and divide it by 12. But oops, that has to be locked going down. Because we want it locked going down. But we move across the column, we need to move to 10. Divide it by 12, comma. The uh, NPER is going to be this right here. And we need to lock this going to the side, because when our formula goes across the columns, it needs to be looking at 60. But when it moves down, it needs to move to 120. And then comma, finally, the present value, we have to go up and get this from the, the table, which is our original loan amount. Close parentheses. Uh, and that needs to be locked in all directions. Close parentheses. Now, if I want this to be positive, you know, you see some textbooks where they put the minus there, but that's not right. Because in cash flow analysis, if it's from your point of view, that's really a positive. So the, the trick just to remain uh, often, uh, authentic to the rules of cash flow and finance, I always like to put the minus there. Now I have my formula, and I control enter and populate all the way down. All right, so there you go, two variable uh, data tables. And earlier we did one variable data tables. We'll see you next trick.